Hello everyone and welcome to IT Knowledge Base. In this video lecture, I will talk about the thoughtful in extracting password hashes or dumping the contents of NTDS.RIT file using volume shadow copies via the VSS admin command and PowerShell. With so much attention paid to credential based attacks such as pass the hash and pass the ticket, most serious and effective attacks are often overlooked. One such attack involves exfiltrating the NTDS.RIT file from the Active Directory to Win controllers. Let's take a look at what this threat entails, how an attack can be performed, and how you can protect your organizations. The more I learned about the NTDS.RIT mystery, the more I came across other clever and crafty ways attackers are compromising Active Directory servers. It makes sense, after all, Active Directory is a prime target in virtually any attack because adversaries know just how crucial it is in their quest to find and steal what they are looking for. Let's understand first what is the NTDS.RIT file in Microsoft Server and Client Operating Systems. The NTDS.RIT file is a database file that is standalone or non-domain joint Microsoft Operating Systems and Active Directory data, including information about user's object, password hashes, groups and group memberships. All the Active Directory data, including information about user objects, password hashes, group and groups memberships, is stored in the file ntds.dit on every workstation and domain controller and the default location is c colon backslash windows and ntds. Importantly, the file also stores the password hashes for all users in the workstation and domain. Cyber criminals who extract these hashes can then perform pass the hash attacks using tools such as Mimikatz or crack the passwords offline using tools like Hashcat. In fact, once an attacker has extracted the hashes, they can act as any user on the domain, including domain administrators. So how does an attack on the NTDS.RIT file to work? In step number one, our first and foremost task is to steal the NTDS.RIT file. Go to the C colon backslash windows, navigate to NTDS folder, and here it is, NTDS.RIT file. This is not as straightforward as it sounds because this file is constantly is in use by Active Directory and therefore it's locked. If you try to simply copy the file, you will see an error message like this. It's locked by default because it's always in use and you'd have to take the domain controller down or offline, which definitely someone would be noticed. Click on cancel. So how we could get a copy of NTDS.RIT file while Active Directory is running? There are several ways around this roadblock using capabilities built into the windows or with PowerShell libraries. For example, an attacker could use volume shadow copies via the VSS admin command, use the PowerSploit penetration testing for PowerShell modules, leverage the NTDS utilities diagnostic tool available as part of the Active Directory, or attacker can leverage snapshots if the domain controller are running as virtual machine. Let's walk through the first two of these approaches. Using VSS admin to steal the NTDS.RIT file, First, create a volume shadow copy of the complete C drive. Open the command prompt and then type VSS admin create shadow slash four equals C colon and hit enter. And now our shadow copy of the complete drive C is successfully created. After that, I would prefer to create a folder named temp in the C drive. And here I would prefer to pull out all the NTDS date information into this single common folder. And here it is. Now move on to step number two. Retrieve the NTDS.RIT file from the volume shadow copy. First copy the shadow copy volume name. Type copy and paste the shadow copy volume name, then type windows slash ntds slash ntds.dit and your destination folder. C colon backslash temp slash ntds.dit file and hit enter. And now one file is copied. Navigate to C colon backslash temp and here it is. Now move on to step number three, copy the system file from the registry or volume shadow copy. Since it contains the boot key that will be needed to decrypt the NTDS.RIT file at later, type registry, save, hklm slash system, 
C colon backslash temp slash sys and hit enter. You can also copy the boot key from the volume shadow copy. In step number four, if you like, you could also cover your tracks after deleting the recently created volume shadow copy. Type VSS admin list shadows. First check the list of the shadows and copy the shadow copy ID. Now type VSS admin space delete shadows slash shadow equals type your shadow copy ID and hit enter. Do you really want to delete one shadow copies? Type Y and press yes. Now it's time to extract the password hashes. Once the attacker has a copy of the ntds.dit file, the next step is to extract the password hashes from it. DS internals provides a PowerShell module that can be used to interact with the ntds.dit file. Here's how to use it to extract password hashes. Open the PowerShell with the elevated privilege and install the DS internal module. Just copy and paste this line. Module is installed. And after that, type this and hit enter. We already have a boot key in the temp folder to decrypt the system wide. Now fetch the object from the NTDS file. Copy this command and type this here. Press enter. If you get the below error, the database is not in a clean state, try to recover it first. You might see this message, the database is not in a clean state, try to recover it first. This can happen if you create a copy while the Active Directory is actively using the database. So there's a pretty straightforward solution. To that, I am going to use a utility from Microsoft to do the disk repair by passing these parameters. Copy it and paste it here and hit enter. And you can see it's defects and have successfully recovered this file. Let's try again and fetch the object from the NTDS file once again. Repeat the same older command and hit enter. And there you go. Now check the output and pay attention to any of your target users who have the highest privilege and the NTLM hash of this account password. All the information I would need about this account is to start performing past the hash or start cracking this password if I want to get the clear text password again. All this can be done offline without access to the network and access to the domain controller once you are able to perform the initial compromise of those ntds.dit file. Scroll up a bit until you find your desired account. I would preferably look for the administrator account which have definitely highest privilege and have enough control to all over the enterprise network. So here's your administrator account and its anti-hashes. You could also create a several views that generate output for the most popular password crackers, including Hashcat, John the Ripper, and OPS Crack. I would prefer to get output in the Hashcat loyal file. Then type this command again. Type the format custom view about Hashcat. And take the output of this file in the encoding ASCII format. Now it's created the hashes.txt file in the clear hashcat loyal format. Now use the password hashes file to complete the attack. Once an attacker has extracted the password hashes from the ntds.grid file, they can use tools like Mimikatz to perform pass the hash attack. Furthermore, they can use tools like Hashcat to crack the password and obtain clear text values. Once an attacker has those credentials, there are no limitations on what they can do with them. Now crack the NTLM hashes with the Hashcat. I had already copied the hashes.txt file in my host machine. Type hashcat.exe space mode 1000 hashes.txt password file space type tag tag Username space tag tag force space tag tag keep guessing. Use these switches to force clearance. Ignore the GPU related errors. 
and rerun the hashes cracking and now hit enter. Cracking hashes with the hash cat is finished. Now all the hashes are cracked with the provided hashes and password files. How can organization protect against attacks on the NTTS.dat file? The best way is to defend your organization against this attack is to limit the number of users who can log on to the domain controllers, which includes not just member of highly privileged groups such as domain admin and enterprise admins, but also member of less privileged groups like print operators, server operators and account operators. The membership of all these groups should be strictly limited, constantly monitored for changes and frequently recertified. In addition, consider using monitoring software that can alert and even prevent users from retrieving files of volume shadow copies. But with the golden ticket or pass the hash functionalities of Mimikatz, an attacker could seize control of the entire Active Directory forest even without cracking those password hashes. NTDS.read extraction All Active Directory data is stored in the file NTDS.dit on each domain controller. And the default location is c colon backslash windows slash ntds subfolder. To access the ntds.dit file on a domain controller, and adversaries must first gain administrator access to an active directory. Alternatively, the adversaries can copy ntds.dit file from a backup by compromising the organization's backup solutions. So what are the countermeasures and how to protect against it? To reduce the risk of adversaries extracting your NTDS.dat file, follow these best practices. Clean up your Active Directory, including group policy. Minimize the number of accounts that can log on to the domain controller. Follow the clean source principle for domain controllers, all infrastructure for example ESXi and connected storage and applications for example backup programs. That service domain controllers must be at the same security level as the domain controllers themselves. Maintain the physical security of the domain controller machines. If it can be ensured, consider running read-only domain controllers. Do not allow users to possess administrative privileges across security boundaries. And finally, turning on the BitLocker. As a countermeasure, companies must secure physical access to domain controllers, their backups, and their VHD, VHDX, and VMDK images. In case of virtualized domain controllers, Turning on BitLocker is not a bad idea either. We should look forward to the new security features introduced included shielded VMs and virtual TPMs. Principally, if you are learning ethical hacking, information security or cyber security, all are equally emphasized for you to perform defensive and offensive hacking approaches, training and tactics. Those who have a sporadic nature of learning like me should watch this video repeatedly. I am sincerely showing gratitude to you for being here and I look forward to joining you through this lecture. Thank you.